from the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world. This, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. No place that I would rather be. Thank you for tuning us in, including Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, guess what? We have them free for you at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. Do a little shopping at the SOR vault. Pick up a great book at We Read the Night. Don't forget to sign up for the SOR Space Travelers Club. Read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and much more. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by donating to Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. A good familiar voice comes and graces us the night before, or two nights before, All Hallows Eve. Yes, Ian Holt is here, the award-winning author who helped write the sequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula, has spent time on television in the movie scene. He's spent time with MTV Raps. He spent time being one of the loudest speakers that we have on this show every couple of months. He's a good friend of this show, good friend of mine. We're going to get Ian right up here momentarily. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Mr. Ian Holt, always a pleasure to have you on Spaced Out Radio. How you doing, my friend? How you doing, Dave? Happy Halloween, everyone. Well, you oh, it's so exciting. Out there. So exciting. I'm a little disappointed in my little I'm, guy, though. I'm a little disappointed. Why? Well, because I didn't get to go... Hey, don't tell me. He wants to be a Frozen character for, for Halloween. No, no, no. Nothing, nothing like that. Nothing like that. No, I didn't even get to take him looking uh, for a costume this year because he wanted to be Bumblebee again. And he loves Bumblebee. So, you know, there's something cute. There's something cute about wanting to take your kids to to go do a little shopping and and get uh, a new costume every year. But he didn't want it. Wants to be Bumblebee for the second year in a row. God, I mean, but Bumblebee is a cute idea for a costume for a kid. I got to admit, like a little VW, that's fun. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like. If it was my kid, he would have to be like, you know, Leatherface or something. Well, you, that's where our, our minds kind of cross, because I've never really been a horror guy. You scared the living daylights out of me all the time with your stories and your love of things weird and strange like that. How did you get into that? What what made you so so flamboyant, I'm going to use that word, for the horror industry? Well, well, I think what happened as a kid, I horror scared me. When I saw my first horror movie, it scared me, you know. And I'm like the type of person that I don't like to not be able to do something. So I kept watching horror till I could desensitize myself and like beat it. And I think that became a you know a metaphor for my life. I mean, I think kids getting over horror is important. This, that being scared because it's it makes you strong. It makes you able to face your fears. I mean, I'm very calm, cool, and collected in, you know, bad situations, you know, where other people fall apart of panic. I'm very calm, you know, because I don't get frightened. So, I mean, and I owe that to horror movies. You know, I think, well, having a dog teaches you, you know, empathy and all of that, responsibility, you know, getting over your fear of horror movies makes you a strong person. You know, it's like old Nietzsche saying that, which does not kill you, makes you stronger. Well, that's something that uh, I never learned because to this day I still will not go near the ocean. Too many sharks, too many great whites, too many tiger sharks, bull sharks, any type of shark that would see me as a meal, and I'm just not going there. I refuse. I absolutely refuse. (laughs) I wanted to go into the ocean. I wanted to, I went to go out on a boat looking for sharks. You know, I used to look for fins. I used to have my binoculars on the beach looking. I used to go out on my boogie board looking for fins. I wanted to see a shark. I was obsessed with sharks after Jaws. That's just the way I am. It's like I, I'm kind of, 
person that rushes in where other people fear to tread. You know, that's always been my, my, um, my personality. You know, if, if someone says don't do it, I'm the first one that wants to do it. If so, if everyone's going right, I want to go left. Yeah, not me, not me. I like land. Don't like the ocean. Don't need a suntan. Don't need any of that. I am just very, very good, very good at not being near it. Because even when I am in a swimming pool, my friend. Even when I am in a swimming pool and there is nobody else in that pool, I hear the theme song to Jaws. And it scares me. And I get out as quickly as I can. The way I learned to swim was I asked my uncle to push me in a pool, in the deep end of the pool. And I just either was going to swim or I was going to drown. And I just started kicking and all of a sudden I was I was swimming. So, I mean, even even that, I was like kind of a little nuts. Well, you know, you're a different breed, my friend. You are a different breed, and I absolutely love and adore you for for that. With the horror movie uh, genre, and let's get into this, because people love to get scared here, Ian. What, in your, opinion, what in your opinion is, what, what's your top five horror movie characters? Oh, well, I mean... <laughs> I think number one is Michael Myers. Um, I think Dracula and Frankenstein, um, the werewolf, um, Leatherface, um, and Freddy Krueger, and and Jason, of course. I love Jason out. But those are, the, I mean, you know, as you think about them, those are the icons. You know, you could throw in Creature from the Black Lagoon if you want, um, uh, but I those are the the ones that have stood the test of time. And you could put in uh, Chucky. He always comes back. You know, I, but those are the, the main icons. But those are, you know, those are formulaic. Those are comfort food horror. You know, I, I like horror films that are also that are out of the blue, like, um, don't breathe. I thought it was really good. Even the PG 13 lights out. I thought it was really good, you know, because lights out was just based on scares. Uh, uh, don't breathe. You know, the, the idea of the blind killer in the dark hunting people. I mean, there's a lot of different films. I mean, Rosemary's baby, which is like more about, you know, uh, paranoia, you know, it's the shining, you know, the zombies didn't have monsters in them. You know, I love the Conjuring films. Um, so, I mean, but there are, are iconic characters in horror that last every generation, and those are them for sure. I mean, they're doing another Dracula series on BBC. Everett, you know, wants, me to ask one... you what you, Everett wants me to ask you what, th- what you think of AHS 1984. I don't know what that is, by the way. Uh, first story, 1984. Okay, I'm going to make a confession. Watch an episode of American Horror Story. Never watch an episode. And the reason is that um, I am not a fan of TV horror series. I mean, that's I, I'm a fan of The Walking Dead. I love The Walking Dead. But I just couldn't see, you know, the first season of American Horror Story. It just didn't grab me, and, and I never watched it. So I, I have to confess, I, I have never watched American Horror Story. I mean, um, you know, I tried to watch the Scream series on MTV, which was just interminable. I try to watch, uh, you know, I love Stranger Things on Netflix. I loved um, uh, House on, I think it was House on Haunted Hill on Netflix. Um I just think that these these shows with so many episodes, I think they can a lot of I find a lot of it filler, you know, and uh, horror. I don't have patience for the filler. Get to the freaking scares, and it's hard. It's really hard to be scary on a TV show when you have commercials to take you out of it and stuff. Like the Netflix stuff where you don't have commercials, I find it works much more effectively as horror. That's just my opinion. You know, this is just my personal taste. 
uh, I'm not condemning the show because I haven't seen it, but I think commercials, whenever I watch anything with commercials, it takes me out of the horror. Like, I want to be immersed. I don't want an escape. I don't want a moment to breathe. You know, I want that, you know, you can't catch your breath on the edge of your seat, and I like it sustained, so your heartbeat's going faster and faster. And you can't get that on TV with commercials. I agree with you there. That's why I never like watching any good horror movies or classics on television because the commercials do ruin it. And they, plus, you know, all the good scenes always end up on the floor of the editing booth. But in regards to your top five characters that you have named, whether it's Leatherface, Jason, Freddy, Chucky, I still think you left out Pinhead. Pinhead was awesome from the Hellraiser movies. You know, yeah, Pinhead, people... Pinhead. Successful you broke. I mean, over time. Hello? Yeah, you're breaking up there me? a little bit, Ian. Yeah, we got okay, you. Hold on. Better? Okay. I mean, Pinhead had, you know, the first three were pretty successful, and then after that, they kind of slid off. So, I, you know, the, I'm looking forward to if they can do a reboot that's worthy. I would like, I'm surprised that's a series that really hasn't continued on. I mean, well, they've got so much life out of out of Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street, same as with the Friday the 13th series and, and Halloween. Pinhead's like the forgotten one, man. He's really forgotten, well, and that saddens me. Well, it saddens me too, but again, they were getting to a point in the story where it was really going to sexual torture and stuff, and and it was, you know, how do they keep topping themselves? They went pretty far, and I think after a while, it was getting to a point like, how do you top that? How do you do it differently? You know, and that's, and, you know, at that time, it wasn't about being creative, like coming back with a Halloween 2018. It was about repeat, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, you know, just do it again. And I think it didn't hold, the story wasn't able to hold up over, a number of sequels the way Freddie was. I mean, you get all new bunch of kids, all new everything, but the Freddie was always doing something different. <laughs> you know, he was always turning into something else. He always had a great funny line, you know, um, pinhead was more static. Um, and I don't know why that is. It's just the creativeness of the series kind of ran out as Clyde Barker walked away from it. See, it always reminded me of a, of you remember the eighties movie Tron? Totally Love reminded Tron. me of, yeah. Totally reminded me of the horror side of Tron. That's what I liked about it. Yeah, I mean, it did have that sense of the other world, and especially in the second movie where they went into the, uh, the hell. I mean, it, it really had that sense. Um, no, I mean, I, I I think there's a reboot there in Pinhead and and Hellraiser give it a fresh start. I don't, I don't see any reason why they had to do redo Chucky. I don't see why. <laughs> what I mean, that was just a nightmare, that movie. Um, the remake. Um, I liked, uh, I really loved the new Halloween. I thought it captured, you know, everything that you love about the series. Um, I'm uh, trying to think what else I saw that was really good. I'm looking forward to seeing, I just got uh, Three from Hell. Um, which is fortunately Sid Haig's last movie. He was supposed to be in my next movie. Unfortunately, he's not going to be because he passed away. May he rest in peace. But I'm really looking forward to uh, Three from Hell, um, a sequel to uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. Do you, I mean, think, Rob Z do you think Rob Zombie makes a good horror movie? Or is he trying too hard? I Oh, I think he's fantastic. I loved, uh, what was the Lords of Salem? I loved 13. I thought 13 was just, what, what, what I love about Rob Zombie, he captures what made um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre so, probably the scariest movie ever made in my opinion, because it's, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know Anything is possible. That's what made Freddy good, too, because you couldn't predict 
anything. You couldn't guess anything. You didn't know where it was going to go. So you're just like on the edge of your seat. I mean, when you first saw Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, you've never seen anything like it. Freddy could do anything. You know, he could be anywhere, come out of anywhere. I mean, the tension in that film was, was pretty unbelievable. And Rob captures that madness. You feel like you're in an insane, it's, 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 like in, the, in his mind, and his mind is an insane asylum. Whatever his movies, when you watch, they're so bonkers. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And I love that. And he has such a love of film. I see, you know, silent films that I've loved and, and old horror films that, you know, uh, Spanish horror films and stuff that I see him, uh, you know, where his influences are when I watch it. And you, you just get really excited. Gal Italian horror and all the stuff that you see in his movies. It's just, it's just, he's just, He's not like anybody else. He has his own, you know, stamp on it. You know who's a big Rob Zombie fan is Captain Shirk. You know Gail very well. You know, she loves she loves Rob Zombie's music. She absolutely loves it. For people who don't know who Gail is, she takes care of our SOR Newswire and keeps me up to date and scares the crap out of me with all these shark stories that she's been having lately. But nonetheless... You know, she is a diehard Rob Zombie music fan. She loves his great new song about the UFOs. I can't repeat the the beginning of the title of that song because, you know, I don't talk like that. It's kind of perverse and you know makes me question, you know, Gail's intentions and things like that. But, you know, um, yeah, I think Rob Zombie is very talented. I want to get back to Jaws for a moment, though. Do you think Jaws has the effects on people because everybody loves the ocean. Everybody loves the water and swimming and and playing in water. And the fact that you have this real creature that could be out there, a 20, 30-foot great white shark that is devouring people, taking down cruise ships. I know it didn't, but that's my exaggeration. Do you think that that's the way horror should be going? Is more realistic like that, like the way Jaws was? I don't think it, it needs to, you know, like it specifically has to go that way, but I think that's an element of horror films that, that should continue. I mean, the the thing about Jaws, why it worked at PG and why it's still so scary because when you go in the water, you can't see the shark. You don't. You, you could be standing right there when the shark comes to all those people and grabs the little kitten boy on the on the raft. You know he swims to all those people right under their feet. They don't even see him. And and the thing is, is that it's it's so real. Like it could happen to anybody. That's one of the things that you know Halloween was too. I mean, even though he's supernatural at the end. The basic Halloween movie he escapes from the from the the uh, state penitentiary, and he'll kill anyone for any reason. And that's what the, the the new one captured. It got back to that, you know, that there's this guy out there and he can kill you for no reason. He could be anywhere and kill you for any reason. You know, there was no rhyme or reason to it, and that's what's scary. The shark isn't picking its victims. It could be anybody at any time if you're in the water. And Michael is like a shark on land. He's like, you know, like, remember, if you're old enough to remember uh, Saturday Night Live, you know, land shark, you know, that's, I always thought Michael Myers was like the land shark. Well, you know, I think to me, it's more believable. It's like, but I'll tell you what has killed it for me. No pun intended. As we got about three and a half minutes here to go before we go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Ian Holt is our guest. What's killed it for me with the horror genre is the CGI. The CGI at times looks so fake, especially when, you know, you got all these great movies about the ocean, about Megalodon and, and great white sharks and everything that scares the living daylights out of me. And then you look at the this crap and the CGI is so terrible. You know, it's like they picked up a, their CGI equipment, a Kmart Blue Light Special, that it takes all the fun and intrigue out, and it's not even worth watching for me. How is CGI, in your opinion, 
affected the quality of horror movies? Well, I mean, when they got to the point when you stab someone and the blood is CGI'd and you can tell it right away and you don't have the squib and the blood bag, that was when I just like lost it. Um, you know, Savini set a standard with Friday the 13th that has been carried on movies like Maniac and all this, a little bit of gore. But when you have these creatures or you do the CGI stuff with these ghosts, the only time it works is the Bloomhouse method where you have, I mean, practical makeup, real special effects enhanced by CGI. You know, that's where CGI can come in. But if you're doing all your effects, all CGI, it doesn't work. Never works. I mean, even in my movie, episode 50, when they got to deal with the CGI, we reshot the end to create the CGI demon at the end, and I begged them not to. I mean, the way I originally had it shot was we used Kabuki theater. We created a shadow on the wall so you couldn't see it. And we had a little cardboard cutout of some like demon creature and you would just see the shadow and then it would, the arm would move and then someone would go flying and you, it was scarier to me because you couldn't see it. You didn't, you, whatever you in your head is going to be worse. So then they created like a little demon with, with horns and stuff. And I was like, it's not as good, but you know, oh, we got the CGI at a price, so let's put it in. And, you know, when you have partners and it's not your own production company, which is why I opened my own production company, you you got to go with what your partners want. So I, I am not a fan of all CGI. I mean, even the shark stuff. I mean, look at what they do with Jurassic Park movies, right, or Jurassic World movies. They have animatronics. Even on Walking Dead, they have animatronics that sometimes they enhance with CGI, but the, having the animatronics makes the creatures more real. When it's all CGI, like in Meg, it just never looks real. And that's the point. And I think that's a, a lot of the reason why the horror industry has taken a big hit is because they've gone to relying on CGI too much. Well, I mean, there are horror films that that go by the wayside, but horror is the most um, profitable films that you can make. If you hit with a horror film, it's more profitable than the big blockbusters because your, your margins, I mean, if you make a $15 million movie and it makes $150 million at the box office, you make a lot more money than if you make a $100 million movie and it makes $300 million at the box office, you know, because of advertising costs and everything else and the special effects and all these things you make a lot more money on a horror movie, and it's not as ex- not as big as investment risk. And on so that horror note, is doing great. On that note, we're going to take a break here. Ian Holt is our guest tonight. He stops by every couple of months to say hello. Ian will next be back in December. We got him for another two hours, though, on Spaced Out Radio, so be excited because his hair looks fantastic. We'll be back. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com.
Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Finish off your weekend and kick off your new week with me, Everett Themer, right here on Spaced Out Sundays. I'm going to bring you great guests, a little bit of snark, and plenty of information to think about. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of woo as well. We are going to hit everything in the paranormal and supernatural, including the odd psychic Sundays. So tune us in on Sunday, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Every night on Spaced Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencers Support Association. This is Ryan Stacy, head of the Research Association, TESSA. Soon on the Spaced Out Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Spaced Out Radio listeners today. Move over, brother! And let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just 5 bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Looking for something new to push your limits? Look Beyond the Spectrum, a new docu-series featuring some of the best researchers in the world when it comes to everything from UFOs, government cover-ups, and Bigfoot in the forest. Truth seekers like Steve Bassett, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, Richard Dolan, as well as others all chip in to bring their knowledge to you. Beyond the Spectrum can be found on Amazon as well as Tubi TV. Tell us what you think on our Amazon page. 
Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio. Tonight, I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have each and every one of you with us. Don't forget, if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can always go to our archives. They are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. Read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. You can rock out to Rob Zombie with her away from the Newswire, though. You can also do a little shopping like Filth did, picking up a Spaced Out Radio t-shirt at the SOR Vault. Sign up for the SOR Space Travelers Club at 5 bucks a month and so much more. Our favorite horror movie critic and writer, Ian Holt, is here tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Comes in every couple of months just to shoot the breeze on what is going on in the world of entertainment, movies, music. Ian, welcome back to the show. Uh, Hey, Dave. Hey, everyone. I know you're having a good time. Dude, what happened to the Yankees in the playoffs? What happened there? Talk about it, but all I'm happy is that the Nationals won tonight, and we're going to Game Seven, and I want the Astros to lose. I am a sore loser, and I'm still in mourning, <laughs> my Yankees. But they did it to themselves because they didn't get a pitcher at the at the trade deadline. They could have had Cole, they could have had Granky, they could have had somebody. And then the other thing that screwed us was Domingo Herman punching your wife in the face a month before the playoffs. I mean, when we needed him so bad because we only had a couple of pitches we could use, Hap was useless, so he would have had three pitches. Instead, we only had two, and that killed us. I mean, him being suspended for baseball for domestic abuse was like, how dare you hit your wife? You know, that's bad enough. But to do it before the playoffs, that you would allow yourself to to lose control like that? Yeah, not a cool dude. Not a cool dude. what he got. I'm not saying he shouldn't have been suspended. He absolutely deserves it. If he did hit her, he deserves to go to jail. But I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta check yourself. Oh, I agree. I absolutely agree. Ian, I want to ask you about the latest Joker film. Ah, uh, yes. There's a lot Joker. of people trying. There's a lot of people trying to twist this into some weird, strange details of what is happening in real life, my friend. And I think that is a representative of what's happening in real life. You know, and and when I watch the Joker films, I see Illuminati. I see, you know, the Bilderberg group. I see all this, the, you know, the Freemason idea, the secret society kind of thing. You know, it's all in there. It's like, we are set up to lose because there's a group of people like, like uh, you know, Bruce Wayne's father uh, that, that are controlling everything and don't care about the masses. They're caring about their own. The rich care about the rich. The corporations care about the bottom line. Don't care about the workers. All this stuff. And it ties into the Dark Knight, too, because... The Dark Knight show, really, what's really happening, even with the movie coming out, Scorsese's new movie, The Irishman, where the one time there was the mob, and they supported the unions, which supported the Democrats, and you've got, and, and the workers. I won't say Democrats, I'll say workers. And, and they bought politicians on, that supported workers' rights. They gave money to politicians and all that. When Giuliani and all these guys cleaned out the mob, The white-collar crime, you know, the white-collar influence and white-collar crime exploded. 
because they had no check. The mob was always the poor man's lobbying group. And without the power of the mob there, things, thing, things have gone, and that's why the gap between rich and poor here has gotten so great. There's nothing on the other side because people are just pure greed now. You know, there's no one defending the worker. And we, the Joker is about, not only about money, but it's about how people are looked at. You know, I try, I don't care if you're a homeless person on the street, I make a gigantic effort if you're white, black, purple, green, polka dotted. I don't care, I try to treat everyone with respect. You know, from the time I was a little kid, my parents always said, but Martin Luther King said, judge someone by the content of the character, not the color of their skin. And that's been my, you know, mantra my whole life. And in the movie, you see that people with less or that are a little odd or a little different are looked down upon. You know, the two times the Joker is beat up in the movie, you know, one, he's robbed by kids that need money, right? They're poor kids, they're street kids, whatever. They're criminals. So you say, okay, those kids deserve to be punished. I got it. But when the rich guys on the train attack him for being weird and just beat him up for no reason, when they have these great jobs, they work for Wayne Enterprises and they're rich and they get to uh, harass that woman on the train and then they beat him up because he's laughing because he can't help himself and he's dressed as a clown. He's just weird. I mean, you say... That is society today. That's what goes on at Columbine. That's what went on this bullying and all the stuff that we have that we don't check. It, you know, nobody, you know, when he's at the end of the movie and he's talking about rudeness, you know, and, and even in, in our politics, you know, Democrats hate Republicans and Republicans hate Democrats. It's like no one talks about being American anymore. It's you're either right or left. And they don't get along and everybody's arguing all the time over nothing. And there's no compromise anymore. It's everything is black and white. There's no more gray. And this world that we've created, it's almost like you, you, when you watch this movie, you just see it. You see like the world, our world, even though it takes place you know, 20 years ago, you see our world and you, it's amazing how no matter what this guy does, the Joker, somehow you feel like he says at the end to Robert De Niro, I'm justified. You know, they had it coming. <laughs> and you, you, you are with the people that are rioting at the end, you know, because you just feel like you, no matter what you do, everything is corrupt. And that's kind of the, idea behind the Illuminati. I mean, if you look at our lives, I mean, my whole life from, you know, the early 70s to now, if you look at society and the idea of the Illuminati, is they control everything and one side always wins. So if you look at, you have Kennedy. Kennedy's assassinated because he wants to change things. Uh, Lyndon Johnson comes in and gives us the great society. He also gives us Vietnam. When we try to pull out of Vietnam, we get Nixon. Nixon then goes to Ford because he, he has to leave because of what he does, his impeachment. But then, then we go to Carter. Carter tries to be the nice guy, but everything collapses, right? Then you get Reagan, who pushes everything towards the economics. And then you go to, to, to uh, Bush, who originally said voodoo economics is what Reagan's policies were when he ran against him, then all of a sudden he switches and he wins. Then he's beaten by Clinton, and then you have Bush, right, beats Gore. And if you look at it back and forth, this, we constantly go make a few strides one way, then the other party comes in, we make a few strides the other way, and we go back. But what really happens is we stay the same, and the only thing that changes is the power of the wealthy and the corporations. They always win. That's what it feels like. So, and you, there's like not one, you, like you don't decide on one party and stick with that philosophy and see it through. Like we had a surplus when, when Clinton left, we balanced the budget. Bush comes in, we have 9-11 and all of a sudden we're, you know, 
we have the 2008 crash and everything else, but it's always one, then the other, then the other, and nothing ever gets advanced anymore. We don't make strides like we did, you know, with um, uh, the New Deal or the Great Society or the Civil Rights Movement. We don't do anything anymore. Every Congress is a do-nothing Congress. And the only ones who get anything done are the people that pay the politicians for their campaigns and the people that have the money to do that get their policies enacted. And isn't that what the Illuminati is all about? You know, the, controlling everything. So you're trying to say to yourself, like the Joker, like the game is rigged. We're all clowns because we let this happen. You know, we're fi- they keep us fighting amongst ourselves. I mean, we keep talking about how Russia interfered in our elections. Well, all they did was exploit, you know, our own racism and, and anger about social issues. When we make advances for the middle class on one side, then the social issues come in and people vote against their own pocketbooks because they bring in God and how you feel about religion. And I'm not saying either side is wrong or right. I'm just saying we are constantly going two steps forward, two steps back. I mean, we settled abortion issue, it's back again. It's all, everything comes around in cycles and we don't get anywhere. It's like we're running, you know, in a hamster wheel. And the Joker is like, wait a second, it's time to break the wheel. It's like that scene in the uh, Ridley Scott's uh, Apple commercial where he throws the hammer at the screen, right? In the 1984 commercial. It's like someone's got to break the system. And that's why we're with the Joker. And that's why, like, It was an article today about people in protests all over the world, political protests, or wearing Joker masks. They're wearing them in Hong Kong. They're painting their face like the Joker. The Joker is resonating with people in a way that I haven't seen a movie resonate with people in a very long time. (laughs) You know, it's... it's, uh, Ian, do you think that people are resonating with it because deep down we all have that, that psychotic person who would love to come out every now and again and, and and just you know go crazy in life but we can't we gotta hold it together yeah i think it's our fantasy you know it's the fantasy to go it's just like scarface you always say you can't have a villain as a lead character but we did with al pacino because al pacino had the guts and he didn't care about consequences his thing was make it you know live the american dream by any means necessary you know and we admire that you know because we wish we could do that you know we love dillinger and because he burned the uh the uh when when he robbed the banks he burned the um the uh all the loan papers so people weren't losing their houses during the depression the farmers their land i mean you know we have this thing in us where we know we're being screwed, but we don't know how to change it, or or we don't want to risk our families and our lives with prison and whatever. I think that's why we love vampires because you know vampires can't be killed with bullets, so that you know you put them in a jail cell, they'll bend the cell bars and get out. It's it's that idea of you know superheroes. Superheroes get away with everything. You know, it's the idea of having the power to control our own destinies. That's what America was always about. That's what the wild going out west was about, westward expansion, you know, uh, all of that, manifest destiny. All of that was about freedom. And now it's become, we feel that no matter who we vote for or what we do, we always wind up in the same place. If you're on the left, you see no rise in wages, no greater economic power. While rents are going up, Things are becoming more expensive and you're not making more money. College is going up for your kids. Your next generation of your kids are not going to be as successful as you are. On the right, you see the, you feel the destruction of the moral center of the country. Um, you feel the loss of freedoms encroaching on you. I mean, you know, it's both sides have a point and we're not, we're not compromising to make it better on, for anyone. We are absolutists now. You're on one side or the other, and there's no, like, middle ground anymore. So we don't get anywhere, either either side. And I just think people are frustrated. They just don't feel like their lives are getting better, and everyone has a different person or reason to blame for it. 
but nothing ever changes. And that's why the Illuminati has always been such a, you know, an endearing thing. I mean, look at the Bilderberg group. You have a group of wealthy businessmen who meet in secret every year at this big resort. No one's allowed in, no cameras, no, no press, no nothing. You don't know what they talk about or what they, it's almost like they decided the fate of the world. You know, it's very easy to go, okay, we had this surplus and the middle class was growing after Clinton, right? And then all of a sudden Bush comes in, the whole Gore thing in Florida, Bush comes in, and then this pendulum swings the other way, back to back, and you have and you have a deficit again because all of a sudden you have these towers that collapse that people believe they were a detonation and they were they were brought down. You know, they don't even believe that 9-11 happened the way they say. You can't see the plane hitting the, the Pentagon. You know, and it's, and, and it's almost like if you want to buy into the Illuminati, you can see it. I mean, if you look at the world the way things are going, you just say, there's got to be something that stops us every time from advancing, whether you're on a, a Republican or a Democrat, a right, to the right or to the left, a conservative or a liberal, progressive. You never get ahead, either side. So something, you know, the country is a democracy. We should be able to vote and sustain a vote on what we want as a country. But outside forces are always pushing us toward back towards one side, then the other comes in eight years, eight years, eight years, and we never get anywhere. And the only one who wins is the rich. The rich keep getting richer. The gap between rich and poor keeps getting bigger. And if they're the only ones that are winning, well, isn't that the, the Illuminati? <laughs> I mean, it's it's... And the Joker reflects that frustration. And that's why people cheer for the Joker. And Batman is looked at as a tool or his father was a good guy. You, you see Batman's going to be a tool of the status quo, who he thinks are the good guys. And Joker's saying, no, I may be a bad guy, but I'm on the side of the people. I want people you know to what? have. You know what you're reminding me of? And I, I'm going to go old school wrestling here. Going back to the days of the of Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart, I don't know if you were a wrestling fan back then, but that was a major feud. And I'll never forget that Bret Hart, Bret Hart said up here in Canada during one of the interviews that he never thought he'd see the day when a heel was more popular with the fans than the babyface. And here Hart was the babyface. And Stone Cold Steve Austin was the bad guy who was coming in, really didn't give a care about anybody but himself. And everybody knows the persona leading up to Austin 316 and one of the best finishing moves ever in wrestling, the Stone Cold Stunner. And Hart couldn't believe it. He just couldn't understand why people were doing it. Everything that you kind of explained, to me, it, it, it was a real reflection of what happened back then that's been going on for the last 25 years. Well, look, just let's take the immigrant crisis, okay? Whether you're pro-immigration or you want the wall, I'm not going to debate that. But let's just both be rational for one second. If you want to stop illegal immigration into the country, the, what you have to do is go after the businesses that are hiring them. And they have something in this country called e verify where you would have a social security card that has your fingerprint and your picture on it. Now we still have the same social security card we had going all the way back to the fifties. If you wanted to stop immigration, why attack the immigrants? Why deport them? Just take, just stop businesses from being allowed to hire them. Right. But they don't go after the businesses. Like they had that raid. They took all the illegal immigrants or the undocumented excuse well, me, immigrants out. Mm -hmm. The owners who hired them and the owners had a job fair and hired more documented. I mean, you, so again, the politicians are protecting business, but using this issue to divide people and say, OK, either you're pro you know, immigration or against immigration. That's not an issue. The issue is the law. We are a rule of law. Why are the corporations allowed to? Well, they're allowed to make money because it's a capitalist society. I mean, we can agree to disagree on that, my friend, and I don't want to get into a political talk with you because I could I, I could see where, uh, 
you know, I've never really talked politics on here. Maybe, maybe I should, you know, maybe it would get us a few more listeners, but, uh, you know, I don't have bad hair like Rush Limbaugh. That's for sure. Politics. It's just the idea that you want to throw people out of the country. If they don't have a job, they're going to leave on their own. So and they won't come if they can't get a job. So what, I'm not debating the, the drug crisis or anything, just the undocumented worker crisis. You're, it's against the law for a corporation to hire an, uh, an undocumented immigrant without the proper visa. But the corporations hire them with false um, um, uh, uh, social security numbers. Now, why is the business allowed to get away with it? That's my question. If you, if you wanted all legal workers and just in, in, in put E-Verify in, which is a simple scan of a, of, a, of a Social Security card, and it would end. But we don't do that. And that's, I'm not trying to be political. I'm just trying to show the influence of the Illuminati to keep both sides fighting so what, we can never get advanced as a people and solve any issues. Well, because we long- go ahead, finish up. We only got about 90 seconds. That was it. As long as they keep us fighting each other, they, solve, they, they get their issues done and whatever they want gets passed, and we are too busy fighting to notice. And that's what the Joker is saying. The game is rigged, and we're not going to take it. We're not going to be clowns anymore. That's why he puts on the face in this. It's, you it's almost a, went it's twisted real- sister there. You almost went twisted sister there with we're not going to take it anymore. I'm going to take it. Oh, yeah. I bet you and D. Snyder have hung out a couple of times. I, it wouldn't surprise this me. Is first, this is the first time. What other movie has done that? Network. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. It's nothing's changed. Everything comes back again because nothing ever changes. We don't get ahead. Either side. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. Neither one of us win. True. True. We just saw it up here in Canada last week. Some of us are still stunned. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and well, right now... And no, and right now nobody nobody looks good, my friend. Nobody looks good right now. We got to go back to remember, remember Richard Pryor when he inherited all that money, Brewster's millions. We got to start voting for nobody, voting for nobody. Yeah, the distinguished gentleman with Eddie Murphy. (laughs) Exactly. Ian Holt is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. He's getting fired up for Halloween. You could tell. I think he's going... Oh. Which character are you going to be for Halloween this year, Ian? Actually, this year, I'm not dressing up. You. You. Are you uh, well, I hope you hand out candy at the door, then. I really do. He will be with us for hour number two, coming up here on the Mighty SOR. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. Canada is a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy in your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at 
purpleplates.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the story you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. This is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Hi there, this is Geraldina Roscoe from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Hey Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezik, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. 
A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiele. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Come hang out with Spaced Out Radio, where we own the night. This is Carl. You can follow Dave on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and during the show, use the hashtag Spaced Out Radio to chat with us live. On Instagram, at Dave Scott S-O-R. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. S-O-R archives are free on YouTube, at Spaced Out Radio. Come join us, or I will come join you. See you at your window. Are you having encounters with the paranormal, supernatural, or ufological that you cannot explain? Look no further than the SOR Sightlines Report, brought to you by the Experiencer Support Association. This is Ryan Stacey, head of the Research Association, TESA. Soon on the Spaced Out Radio website, you'll be able to file your reports and have them researched for you. We are independent and ready to help Spaced Out Radio listeners today. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to the second hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Man, is it cold out here. It is so cold. I was wondering why it's cold in the studio. It's minus six degrees Celsius. Minus uh, that would be twenty-two degrees Fahrenheit. I am frozen right now. Frozen. Holy cow! Is it cold here? Anyways, we want to welcome everyone back. I'm Dave Scott. Thank you so much if you're listening in on KZFX ninety-three point seven FM in Ridgecrest, California. Chuck has a pretty tight goatee. Make sure you check that out. We're on KDNF AM fifteen sixty in Dangerfield, Texas. KDUN AM ten thirty in Reedsport, Oregon. WQEE ninety-nine point one FM in Noonan, Georgia, and UPRN one hundred seven point seven FM in New Orleans. On the digital. Side, Hi to everyone listening in on Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. Don't forget, all of our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obtruncate. Obtruncate is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Website, spacedoutradio.com, has a plethora of features for you. Go shopping at the SOR vault because you need one of our T-shirts. Support an author by We Read the Night. You can also join up and join the chat, which is pretty exciting tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club on our website. Read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and much more. Ian Holt is here tonight on Spaced Out Radio. He comes in every couple of months just to shoot the breeze of what's happening in entertainment around the paranormal fields. Ian, it's always a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Pleasure to be here. Happy our favorite time of year. And let me say, the reason I'm not dressing up this year, unfortunately, I have a meeting on Friday in, in Manhattan very early. And if I dress up and go out, I ain't making that meeting. So I have to put on my business hat and be professional this Halloween, unfortunately. Oh, that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I'm disappointed in you. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. I'm disappointed. You know, but we got to pay the bills, right? That is very true. That is very, very true. Ian, this year especially with this fall lineup of television, especially on cable in the United States, we've seen a major influx of paranormal television. About 15 new shows, mostly from investigators that everybody watches and says, who are these people? How are they getting those jobs? But in the meantime, there's some old faces back on two different shows. We've got Ghost Hunters, Ghost Nation. They all used to be one, but now they've separated into two. What's your thoughts on the 
advancement and the expansion of all these paranormal shows right now? Well, I mean, the new Ghost Hunters is very interesting in the fact that it does a two-day investigation. So on the first night, they... um, they scope out the house and what's going on. And then they make a plan of how to rile up the ghosts in the second. And I'll give you an example. In one episode, you know, the ghost was at a civil war, um, uh, 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 plantation. It was used for cutting, uh, for, for, as a, as a hospital during the civil war where they cut the limbs off, uh, all of that when, from gangrene, there's a spirit with a missing, that has a missing a leg. So on the second night, um, they bring in um, a a person who's an amputee to to help commune with the ghosts, and that's an interesting approach. I find that the breaking up of the two day investigations makes the show more lively because that long thing in in the in the night vision is a little hard. Um, Ghost Nation has gone now investigating the spirits they like in one show they find out that someone died on the property years ago they go to the library and investigate and go do the history of the place and when someone died in the old days they would bury them on the farm so they do bring in cadaver dogs and things like that to try to identify the ghosts and make direct contact with them and um they do that on ghost hunters too but i find that both shows you know, if you watch the original Ghost Hunters very carefully, you'd see this this going going one you know one way or the other. And I think Grant's way of investigating has become Ghost Hunters, and Jason Hawes' way of investigating has become Ghost Nation. And it's just interesting that they are very close, but their styles are a little different. And I find that they're both really interesting. And I think, you know, um, where Ghost nation is more about gathering evidence grant is about helping people and that's the difference in the show i think jason evidence but again on both show, you know especially on ghost nation i was hoping he would take it to the point where he would present his best evidence at the end of the season or have a, uh, the last ep- one episode where he presents his evidence to scientists and try and get the next level. You know, we, ha- we get this evidence in each episode, some none, of course, but when we get good evidence, what do you do with it, Jason? Where do you go with it? What is the purpose of it? You have this evidence now. Why can't we get to scientists to really study this? And that's the that's the the rub for me on all these shows. The one thing about Ghost Hunters and Ghost Nation is they are pure investigative shows. They're not hyped up. I mean, some of these other shows, I mean, they just seem like fantastical things happen that doesn't happen when you go investigating. Nothing that outrageous. Very rarely something that outrageous happens. I mean, I've had outrageous things happen but it's very far and in between. And on these certain shows, these things always happen. And I question them, you know, I, how many of them are, you know, goosed up for, you know, it's like finding Bigfoot. They wanted to goose up that show. And there was a big conflict between the Bigfoot hunters and, and the producers. And it was the, the, the Bigfoot hunters wanted to be professional and they kept it that way. And, and so a lot of the show was just nothing happened. <laughs> you were just waiting for something to happen. And, but when something did happen, when they got a piece of evidence, you were like, whoa, you know? But a lot of these shows, something happens every episode, and that, that kind of, you know, makes me wonder, you know? And I, I'm excited that people are so interested in it. I'm excited that people are talking about it. I'm excited that, you know, we have more evidence than ever before. But at the end of the day, again, like I said before, nothing changes. We haven't accepted anything. You know, it's funny. I I went um, to an orthopedist recently. Um, I I was riding my bicycle and a car hit me and I 
pulled my back out and I went to see the orthopedist. Uh, it was a bump. I wasn't hurt really bad. You know, I get pain in my back because of it. And I went to see the orthopedist and he asked me what I do. And I started talking, we got into this long conversation and we talked about, you know, ghost investigations. And as a man of, uh, you know, science, he got very interested in the idea of ghosts generating electromagnetic energy because he could correlate to the fact that the spinal cord generates electrical charges. The brain is electrical, you know, memories, almost like a disc, but it's, it's electrical stored data. And the idea that they can now, in an electromagnetic field, store data, I said, what does that mean to you? He said, well, we won't need discs soon. And I said, but that's also the beginning of the evidence of a soul. And his eyes opened up. As a guy of science, not knowing that, that thing, he went right to his phone and started looking it up. Because it was, it was for the first time we were talking about how science and religion are coming together more closely. The more, more we learn in science, the more it lines up with the spiritual, with the religious. And these shows don't go there. They don't do anything to advance our learning. They, they gather evidence, so each show is, is, a, is an investigation on its own. And that's where I'm waiting to see the one show that does something with the evidence. You know, I don't, um, I don't think you'll see that. I, and you know what? I, I credit Grant for splitting up because the one thing that really perturbed me, and it's played a huge role in the way the paranormal field has been formed over the last number of years, is going into a haunted location and stirring things up and you don't really know what you're stirring up, and then leaving, saying whether it's haunted or not, and basically allowing the person whose home or business or museum it is to suffer the consequences. And I never liked that. Like, big deal whether That's, I proved it was haunted or not. Big deal. That was... I was such a fan of Brian on, on Paranormal State, because he would exercise the ghost in one way or another. He would get people to get control of the situation to sell you the ghost, leave, you can't stay in my house or, you know, chase them out or exercise them. He really, you know, was a different type of breed, Brian, you know, and of course, look what it did to him. You know, he, doing an exorcism on his own, it, it screwed his life because he's the one that got possessed by the demon, supposedly, um, um, allegedly. And, and these shows don't go there. They don't do any, they never run into a demonic. It's always a residual haunt, a uh, poltergeist or an uh, intelligent haunt, but they never run into anything really evil. And that was what my movie was about. Cause I, I again, I'm waiting for something like that to happen. So, I mean, you know, Lorraine Warren spent her life, you know, chasing the demonic you know, and I'd love to see these guys in a in a situation with an inhuman, an inhuman spirit. You know, uh, what do they do? It, you know, there's so many cases of people being scratched and hurt, and they roll it off as a poltergeist, you know, and they say now this new idea that the person in the house, an adolescent, causes the poltergeist activity. I don't buy that. You know, I don't. I don't buy that when... A poltergeist, yeah, can throw things around a room, move chairs, whether it's caused by the person in the house or, you know, it's an angry spirit. You know, like a, 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 a spirit that's not a bad person will be a, a intelligent haunt. A poltergeist is more like someone that doesn't want you there and is going to fight you being there. It could also be a bad spirit. But if it's scratching you and attacking you, isn't it also possible that it's an inhuman? And they never go there. They mention in human as a classification, but they never really broach that. They don't go into a place that's supposedly really evil. They go into families' houses where you have, you know, uh, the standard haunting. And, you know, part of this whole paranormal thing is, is, is the classification of inhuman. 
And where does that fit in? You have other shows that go there, but I, 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 the only show that really ever really delved into with the Catholic Church, with Lorraine when she was alive, was, was Paranormal State. And some dark stuff happened on that show. So, I mean, maybe they stay away from it because of that. I don't know. But it, it seems like if we want to find out what's going on, you know, they, there's so much talk and theorizing on dark energy in the universe, matter that we can't see. So those other dimensions are those, you know, it's hell a dimension, it's heaven a dimension, and they're out there in space, and that's the dark energy, the dark matter that we can't see. Is all that part of it? You know, I, I, I don't see, I see a lot of theories based on established science, but I don't see anyone doing the investigation to connect that. It's always about, is this place haunted? What's going on in there? Can we scare the audience? Or can we do a proper investigation and get evidence? And, and to me, it's, it's repeated over and over. Oh, I'm going to lock you in for overnight, you know. I, it's all gimmicks. It's all gimmicks. And it's not, and I, ghosts, I give ghost hunters, Grant and Jason, a lot of credit. I give Grant a lot of credit for leaving the show because he wanted to see his kids grow up. You know, he was always on the road. And now that they're growing up, he's come back. I, I, I give him a lot of credit for that. But their shows stay true. And a lot of these new shows, they don't. Star horrors, you know, what was it? You know, the famous people being scared of their ghost stories. These reenactment shows with no proof of what happened really happened. It's just someone telling a story. Is it true? Is it not? You know, I don't, I don't go, go in for those reenactment shows. I mean, the, the show that I watch is Ghost Hunters and Ghost Nation. I don't really watch the others. And um, because I don't find them credible. And I think that's part of the problem, that when a regular person picks up a show, and if they're not careful which show they watch, they're going to watch it and feel like it's goosed up reality. It's not real. It's goosed up by music, by camera angles, and, and you know, people jumping for what? I don't know. I, people jump, and I don't see anything. You know, and people are screaming and it's like, they're not, it's almost like they're not professionals. It's like they're, they're scared kids. Where do they find them? You say that all the time. Where do they find these people? I don't know. Maybe they do investigations and put the investigations up online and then people see it and go, oh, this is a cool team. Let's put them on because they got great personalities. That could be happening. Probably is. Looking for that good-looking face, that that leadership style, the muscles, the long hair, the batted eyelashes. It doesn't matter who it is. Television, you have to look pretty. That's why I got a face for radio, my friend. Big-time face for radio. You know what show is interesting? Ghost Brothers. That's another one that's interesting because they go into the hood. You know, they go into the urban centers in apartment buildings and things like that. That's always an interesting show because you don't really see people of color on these shows. This, this show is about a group of guys who are going into, you know, uh, urban areas and it's a wide, you know, variety of people and races and all of that. And it, it, it at least gives a different feel and a different idea. I mean, you know, um, like Dre, Dr. Dre, when he was on the show with us, coming from Jamaica, he has, and his, you know, and the stories of Jamaican ideas, which go all the way back to slavery and Africa that have been handed down, they have a, you know, his family has a different idea about this spirituality. And it makes the show interesting because you're seeing it from another point of view. You know, uh, I find that interesting. You know, how different cultures see it. You know, the idea, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to have a show set in, 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 in Japan or South Korea where a ghost is a curse, someone who's, who hasn't been laid to rest, and they come back and curse people, and, and, and in that curse, bad things happen to you. It's like bad luck. It's bad juju, whatever, and, and investigate that because that's a, that's, they have their own belief system. There is no such thing as a ghost. It's, it's a curse, which is where the movie The Grudge comes from. But it's, 
the different ideas of what ghosts are in different cultures and how the evidence is the evidence fitting that culture in that area or is it all the same evidence? Can you look at it two ways? I mean, I would just be fascinated to go on ghost hunts in, in, in Tokyo, Japan, China, you know, um, in the Philippines, in Australia, different places, how the culture sees the ghosts and what they think they are what the theories are in those areas. There's no show that does that. We're always, you know, in America, you know, <laughs> the same ideas, the same theories. You know, what are the other theories? That's you know, can they ev yeah, the evidence from a, a ghost hunt in the U.S., would it, would it fit a curse? Does any of these things fit a curse? Or is the curse idea just part of of the Asian religions, but, or does it have, can you get evidence of it? Why isn't someone doing that? Because these shows are, are guaranteed or entertainment at the end of the day. They're there for entertainment, not really to study. And that's the one thing about history channel and the UFOs. These new shows on side, sci-fi channel, science, sorry, science channel and, and history channel where they're investigating UFOs is a lot like contact and the one with um oh, i can't think of his name ran the uh secret organization in the, the pentagon and the guy from some uh, uh some 41 or whatever it is uh uh blink 182 or whatever it is is a guitarist he's they are investigating it's a real investigation where they hunt evidence and speak to people in the government and they've had meetings in Congress and trying to influence politicians and people in the defense department showing evidence, gathering evidence. It's a whole different ball game. And now look, with, with just in a year of this, we've had the, the, the defense department, the Pentagon, the U S government admit that there are UFOs out there. They don't know what they are. Now that's amazing. True. It is true. It is. However, the story behind the story still is trying to figure out whether or not that group has been very honest and forthright with their information. That's a whole different show, nonetheless. Yes, but at least there's a point to those shows. that They're real-time investigations offering evidence to people in power to do something about the UFO crisis. When they're talking to people at Lockheed that build the skunk works and all this stuff, and, and it's it's going somewhere, whether it's how honest they are or whatever it is, the show, I can't speak to that, but the show looks like it's going somewhere. There's an investigation. Well, you know what? We're going to investigate some commercials here at the bottom of the hour. You and I are going to okay. sit, Pat, kind of just hang out, do our friendship thing that we normally do during the breaks, which is kind of cool, kind of fun. All of you out there, what I'd like you to do is kind of kick back, relax, take in the commercials that we're going to be playing. Maybe join up for the SOR Space Travelers Club at five bucks a month because we got Ian Holt here tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We got him for another hour. Never know what's going to come out of Ian's mouth. Anything about the paranormal entertainment, we are into it. Into it big time tonight on Spaced Out Radio. More Ian Holt right after this. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. 
You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and bombs are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great form for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Finish off your weekend and kick off your new week with me, Everett Themer, right here on Spaced Out Sundays. I'm going to bring you great guests, a little bit of snark, and plenty of information to think about. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of woo as well. We are going to hit everything in the paranormal and supernatural, including the odd psychic Sundays. So tune us in on Sunday, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you would know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. 
Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio. You can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. past the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have each and every one of you with us. Reminder, if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can always head on over to our YouTube channel. It's free. YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is SpacedOutRadio.com where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. Read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Sign up for the SOR Space Travelers Club. Five bucks a month, you can do that. Do a little shopping as well at the SOR Vault. We'd love to see you walking around in some spaced out radio gear. Ian Holt is back tonight talking about Halloween, entertainment, the paranormal, anything that goes, because we never really script a show. We just have a little beverage, a little fire, and a good old conversation with Mr. Ian Holt. Here he is. Ian, welcome back. Hey, Dave. I'm glad to be back. It's fun. Every time I do the show, it goes by so fast. Totally, right? I don't know how that happens, but it always seems to. Always seems to, well, my friend. What are words of Ralph Cramden? I'm a blabbermouth. No, not you. Not you, my friend. <laughs> All right, we're going to head on over to the SOR Space Travelers Club on our website. Got a fantastic chat going in there tonight. Absolutely fantastic. Ev is asking, Ian, do you think that the Walking Dead franchise is being spread too thin? Yes. I I think they have... How would I put this in a nice way? I think since uh, Angela... Kang took over. We are they are making a conscious effort to expand the audience more to more female audience. And in that, I think they're making the mistake of becoming a little soap opera. Um it's not about the challenge of the dead. It's about the interactions of the people. And the villains are great, the whisperers are great, but it's all about personal interaction between the whisperers and and the people at Alexandria and people at you know and all this interaction stuff like almost like a soap opera where the dead isn't even a real threat anymore. It's not scary. It's it's a drama that you you know what's going to happen next. Tuning in like a soap opera every week. It's not. That's why I think they've lost a lot of audience. Where the show used to be more scary, and ever since what was it the sixth or seventh season premiere where. Um, uh, Negan bashed in a few heads and it went too gory and turned people off. They've gone in the opposite direction. Now, while I think Angela Kang is a great writer and she's bringing out these great female characters, it's more about personal interaction now and, you know, uh, what's going on with the characters instead of facing the threat. And that, to me, isn't as much fun, you know. I, that's just my opinion, and I think, you know, Angela's doing a great job, but I just wish it was it was more threatening. Like, the, you know, this last week, you had the, the walkers come, to the tree falls and breaks open the gate, and the walkers are coming. Now, compare that attack of the walkers 
to the second season at the farmhouse, you know, and, and it's, it's that, that's just episode, which was directed by my friend Ernest Dickerson, who was just an amazing guy, very talented guy. He was a cinematographer for all the Spike Lee movies and then did Juice, uh, which was uh, Tupac's first movie that Keith Shockley, who was on the show, did the score for, um, and he did, um, Surviving the Game and Bones with, um, Snoop Dogg. You know, he directed that episode where that attack was terrifying. This one was just waves of walkers walking towards you, getting their heads bashed in, where they really don't pre- present a threat of being attacked. I mean, think about Dale's death. One walker, how scary that was. We're getting away from that, and I think that's where the show, they're becoming bogged down in, you know, um, how you survive the apocalypse, how the world rebuilds, all this stuff. And the dead is, aren't the threat. The other humans are the threat. So isn't that just like every other show? You've got bad humans and good humans. But wouldn't it be interesting, to me anyway, that the Whispers and you know Alexandria and, and Hilltop had to work together, to, like that herd that she has, she loses control of it, and now she needs their help, and they have to work together because the threat, again, is the zombies. You know, a zombie movie where the zombies aren't the threat isn't a zombie movie. They're just background color at this point. All right, let's get to another question, actually a pair of them, from Joey in the SOR Space Travelers Club. He is asking, just how are ghost hunting teams supposed to prove something is inhuman in your eyes, Ian? Well, an inhuman haunt is something of a, it usually revolves around a possession. Um, there are people, there are, the church, I mean, we had an article in, in the New York papers here that the archdiocese in the Vatican were looking for more exorcists. If they're looking for more exorcists, they're doing more exorcisms. Now, one of the problems on Paranormal State with Ryan and doing the exorcism episodes was that the church didn't want the exorcisms on camera. They want to keep this low key and under the mat because it, for a lot of people, they, it, it turns, it makes people think that the church is a little nuts. So they try to keep it just to the real believers and, you know, keep it low key. The, if the ghost hunters are really out to help people, if someone's possessed, why don't they come to, one, to a, a, a possession? Um, something that denounces something different than what they do every week. Someone that's really in trouble. Someone who's being attacked. Someone who's being possessed. Like, can you imagine the ghost hunters at, Am- at the Amityville house with the Lutzes? You know, George Lutz is being possessed. He's acting strange. We've got these, you know, all these paranormal activity. Help us. You know, that's what Ryan did. Ryan went into those situations. And look, it cost him everything to help these people. But what is it, what would the ghost hunters do in that situation? You know, there are plenty of possession stories all around. I mean, I've been contacted by people just being on the show, that a uh, man in Alaska that had uh, a possession in his family. He called me and we talked, you know, and I... I, the inhuman, an inhuman creature of possession, what it really is, and if we could get that on film, something that isn't human and someone that's being possessed, and we see a, a, an exorcism. Now, who's done this with a renegade priest? Josh Gates has done it on his show. You know, um, and it was a frightening episode because it was a real exorcism by a former priest who had broken with the, with the Vatican and to, wanted to put this on film for people that need this help to know that they're out there. Now, Josh Gates filmed The Exorcism. It was pretty wild, you know, but Josh just filmed it as watching it. It wasn't an investigation. So while very interesting and informative, we didn't get any scientific information out of it. You know, um, I think... I, I think there are ways to to approach demonic entities. We, you know, they, to find them and investigate it. And I think 
the pure scientific investigation of Grant and Jason, which they are so praised for, to bring their scientific method to a spiritual problem really would confront what they don't talk about. <laughs> you know, all the issues they don't can talk, talk about this, what, what the, all this means, what does it mean? Why are these spirits here? Why did some spirits stay behind? What is it that, that, is happening. Are all spirits able to cross some the cross between worlds? Do we get reincarnated? You know, it, it, you know. There's been shows on on um, 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 ancient aliens which deal with reincarnation and and the ideas. And we've had some crazy shows. You know, you know, cases on ancient aliens about a little girl in India who, you know, knew everything about the woman she used to be. So for some reason she remembered, you know, and she actually is accepted by the family as the mother that died, this other family, and everything lines up, and you just, mouth is hanging open. Um, you know, so all those issues that we would, that we find in the spiritual, that we find in religions that lead us to the spirituality, how does that work into this, to this paranormal stuff we're seeing? What does it mean? We never get to that. There's never a discussion with a priest or a, or a philosopher or, you know, a, a, a Shaolin priest or a Buddhist priest, you know, anything that we're trying to explain what we're seeing. You know, all these restless spirits, you know, when I, when I went to uh, West Virginia, uh, uh, Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in West Virginia. Right. I used I had a like twenty five minute conversation with a with an entity using divining rods and you know we explain like if you take a step forward the rods will cross we'll make that a, a yes if they separate we take a step back they'll separate that's a no and in that conversation I was asking her questions yes or no and it took a while to get to it but by these questions I was asking her. I was getting to the point where I got to understand. I said, you know, were you a patient here? Yes. Are you a woman? Yes. Were you, did you have children here? Yes. Um, um, did you, are you looking for your child? She said, yes. I said, did you die before your child? She said, yes. You know, and now you understand that, you know, uh, I mean, she said, no, excuse me. The child died first and she died and she won't move on because she's looking for her son. And all of a sudden, you get understand why that ghost was there. That's why that 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 conversation with me is so such a landmark in my life because it was it was an intelligent haunt, intelligent entity that I was able to understand why they're still here. That it was her choice not to not to leave because she's looking for her dead son. She doesn't even realize she's dead. You know. And, and she's looking for her son who died before her from tuberculosis when, the, when, a, when TB ran through the, uh, the asylum. I mean, those are the kind of questions I wish they'd ask on these shows. Why are you still here? What does it all mean? And those kind of questions that are the basis of, of what, will, what will make other people believers. All right, let's get a follow-up from Joey here. He's asking, Ian, what do you consider empirical evidence of the paranormal? I think empirical evidence is if you can use the tricorder to elicit responses based on a research, if you can find out who an entity is, and then what you think it is and do the research and know what, how they lived and how that by doing, you know, a background research on that person and then back that up with questions that they answer with the ghost box or with, uh, you know, uh, uh, voice recordings or on the tricorder or, or, or anything like that, where you get responses with pointed questions that, you know, that gets you to elicit the res a response and you can verify that's how you start to build a case. 
it's all circumstantial, but even in, in criminal law, circumstantial evidence can be admitted in court and can, in bulk, in magnitude, the more circumstantial evidence you have, you can elicit a judgment from a jury beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's what we should be doing here. The research should be trying to find out who these entities are and be able to back it up. You're not going to be able to do it in every case, but you can do it. You can bring in a psychic. You know, bring in someone like, you know, Lorraine Warren when she came in, or Skip, uh, can't think of his last name. Bring them in. You know, Michelle Ballanger, bring them in. You know, and, and, and see if you can find out who this person is and then back it up with, with the historical records. You know, birth certificates, death certificates, you know, newspaper articles, you know, land ownership deeds, um, censuses you know, and really put together a case that the entity that you're talking to when you have an intelligent haunt is is the person that died in that place. Find out who it is. That's how you build empirical evidence. You don't need to see a ghost or, or shadow person because that means it, it's just evidence of something weird. But if you can back up that shadow person or those answers on the tricorder, with historical proof, uh, historical evidence of who it is, then you've got something. I think you do. I think that that would be the ultimate goal to try and get that. But is it even possible with the vast array of, of styles that people are investigating? And that's not even including the weekend warrior crew who goes out just for their own thrills, Ian. Well, I mean, take the Amityville Horror investigation done by Lorraine Warren at 76. All right. You had a motion detection camera take a picture of the famous picture of the Amityville ghost boy. You can look it up on the internet. I bring this up all the time. Now, you take that picture and you do a split screen with an actual picture of the Feo child that died. And it's, and it's that kid. Now, if you took that ghost picture and did facial recognition with today's software and it matched, then you have now proof that this child is the DeFeo child. We've never done a, a facial recognition software search on those two images, the real DeFeo kid and the ghost child image. We assume that they look the same, but let's do a facial recognition. The position of the eyes, the width, the separation of the eyes, it's all there. Is that ghost child in the doorway, peeking out from the doorway? Does his facial features match those of the DeFeo child? Why wasn't that done? I mean, we have the technology now that they didn't have in 76. Take the next Very step. True. A- but the question is, when you say take the next step, though, Ian, does anybody really want to take that next step because of disappointment, of disarray, scientists may be finding something that they can't explain on a paranormal level, given all these television shows and people who claim to have had interaction with ghosts seem legit all of a sudden. I mean, they already got egg painted on their face or egg thrown at their face when the UFO story came out. Could it happen the same with the paranormal? But that's your job as a scientist. Present the evidence to them and put it in their face. When you clap the, when you get the case that lines up, put it in their face. Say, here's three cases that I've did. over the past three years of the television show. We've had three. We've done 12 episodes a season, 22 episodes a season, and we've had three cases that are undeniable evidence of this person being the ghost. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to investigate this? How are you going to put the greatest scientific minds in, in making this a legitimate scientific avenue of study that doesn't get laughed at because there is in, irrefutable evidence that something is amiss, that this is something that needs to be investigated? I mean, you have people that are doing out-of-body experiences, you know, com- you know life, you know, that you, uh, when you die, they have... They're, they're doing experiments where they're having numbers put around a room that you can't see if you're lying on the table in the ER. So that people that die that have, that come back, they ask them what they see. And some of them are seeing those numbers that you can't see from the table. The only way to see them is if you rise out of your body and have an out of body experience. There are scientists that are doing this and you have doctors in, 
in ERs that are willing to do this. You know, because people want to know. It's the, it's the greatest unanswered question. It's the thing that scares people the most. It's the greatest fear in life is death. We all avoid it and, and fear from it. But if we can have you, if, but it's the one question everyone wants answered. So, of course, people are going to be interested. But you've got to put the evidence in front of them and make it like you have to investigate this. Look what I found. And that's what I want to see. I want to see a scientist on TV be confronted with evidence, as they do with Bigfoot, where every time they get a, uh, a footprint, they take it to a, a, a professional uh, 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 scientist who looks at the foot and sees the heel arch, if it has an arch and all this stuff, and you can see which ones are kind of like real, that could be real, right, a real animal, and they do a study of the cast. Well, why can't we do that, bring this evidence to a professional scientist that, that would look at the evidence? I mean, this should be a field of study. I mean, you've got archaeologists, you know, that go out and go, all right, the pyramids are 10,000 years old, and just get laughed at. But they do have evidence, they are presenting evidence that there's water damage on the Sphinx. That would mean if there was water on that plain, the Giza Plateau, it would have to be 10,000 years ago. Now you find Puma Punku in... in uh, in uh, in Turkey, and it's ten thousand years old, and you have monolithic structures there that match other mon- monolithic structures. So, I mean, every week on Ancient Aliens, you're being presented with evidence that challenges scientists, that make people ask questions, that get skeptics to answer. This is what we're not doing in the paranormal field. We should be emulating what they're what Sukulis is doing in 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 the ancient alien field of study well they probably should it doesn't seem to be happening that way because it's more for entertainment purposes than the field of study and moving it forward that's the whole point but we can you can make the the presenting of evidence just as dramatic you know it's very dramatic to present a scientist with evidence and see their reaction to it and, and i mean you know, I mean, I mean, you had on Gates' show, his first show, um, what was that Destination Truth? Maybe it was Destination, the wow, Sci-Fi Channel show. Where he, I know where you're talking about. He would, With Josh Gates. Yeah, Josh Gates. He would take the evidence when he did, when he wasn't a ghost hunter, but he would go to haunted sites and then take the evidence and show it to Grant and Jason, right? So why not bring it to a scientist? If he goes on, he goes on a, on a um, Yeti hunt or a Bigfoot hunt, he takes the evidence to a scientist and presents the video footage and the evidence and the audio footage. And they talk, you know, they say, well, this is a, this could be this type of animal. They run it through a database where you try and figure out what the call of the animal is and you eliminate certain, you know, sounds. I mean, it, 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 it shows, it shows, it, it, you know, he did that. Now, why can't we do that with the paranormal stuff that we find? Bring it to a scientist. Let's try and advance the field. Make make these shows be entertaining. That's because science is too busy. The scientists at universities are too busy getting grants for teaching rats how to drive vehicles and, and studying the effects of a cougar walking on treadmills. All right, but how about, did you ever see the, the, uh, the Legend of Hell House? Legend of Hell House was where I got the idea of episode 50. A very wealthy man is dying. Same thing we in got about 10 50. seconds here, buddy. We've got about 10 seconds. Can you carry that on to the, to the next hour? Absolutely. We'll carry it on. All right. Ian Holt, we got him for another 30 minutes on Spaced Out Radio. He's a good buddy of this show, and we're glad to have him here. Hour 3. Right after this with Ian, then the SOR News Wire and the Thought of the Day. Stay tuned. Space Out Radio continues. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity... 
Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. A little bit of science... A little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiemann. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. At SpacedOutRadio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at SpacedOutRadio.com. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are, and what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. 
You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Appreciate each and every one of you tuning us in. Reminder, if you've missed most of this show or others, you can always go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. We want to say a big shout out to everyone listening in on KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California, WQEE 99.1 FM in Union, Georgia, U. PRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans, in Reedsport, Oregon. We're on KDUN AM 1030 and in Dangerfield, Texas, KDNF AM 1560. On the digital side, hi to everyone listening in on Revolution Radio and Kingdom of Nye Radio. Good to have you with us. Remember, once again, all of our archives are on youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obtruncate. Obtruncate is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. You can do a little shopping at the SOR Vault. Sign up for the SOR Space Travelers Club. It's just five bucks a month. And, of course, you can always catch up on the latest news with... Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. For the final time tonight, we introduce Ian Holt. He's a good friend of this show's. Him and I share a birthday together, even though he's one year older and I'm one year more handsome. And, of course, we're getting into some paranormal stuff here. Ian, welcome back. Thank you, Dave. It's good to be back. Hello, everyone. The what's final the, half hour. Oh, wow. What's the creepiest story you've ever heard for Halloween that's been real? Maybe from you, your friends, something creepy. Let's see. I think the creepiest Halloween story is when 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 I was a kid, there was a thing called the Haunted Mansion in Long Branch, New Jersey. And everyone all, everyone wanted to go to the Haunted Mansion on Halloween. And um, a friend of mine who went there 
had this experience of this um, ghost. He kept saying, how'd they do it? How'd they do it? But this like deformed, wispy kind of creature came at him, scared the hell out of him. And he was telling us all about it, that this year they had this added thing, like it was like a hologram or something, and he was all freaked out by it. We all went to the Long Branch, I think it was like the following week, which was Halloween week, and we go through the haunted mansion, and it, nothing happened to us. So, you know, we were talk, when we got out, we asked the guy at the door about this, this new like apparition thing. Was it a, you know, is it a projected? Does everyone see it? Is it a hologram? What is it? And he didn't know what we were talking about. And to this day, you know, we bring it up when we talk to him, my friend, Andy, we talk about it. Like, what did he see in the haunted mansion? Did he see a ghost in the haunted mansion? That was actually a real scare. And I think the idea of being in a haunted mansion, with these things jumping out at you and it's something real in there coming at you like that just interesting you know it was so creepy because it's like you're already in the mindset to be frightened and then something paranormal happens i mean no wonder it's like the most frightening thing that happened to him because it was real or at least it, it, it seemed to be real because they didn't know what we were talking about and i'll tell you the creepiest thing creepiest thing ever this is by all the stuff that's ever happened to me. This is the thing that still haunts me to this day. I was a little kid. We were out in the, at the stationary toy store in town, and they ha- and I think it was right before Halloween. And I know it was it was the day. It was a Friday. It was the day that the Taking of Pelham One Two Three premiered on ABC on television. There was a little kid, and um, I was all excited to see the movie again on on that night. And that afternoon, I'm at the toy store, and my parents buy me this little, like, secret agent kit. It was like, you know, what they hang on the, on the, on a spindle thing, and it's had cased in plastic. It was a gun with a, with a, um, uh, one of those plungers you put in with the sticks to the window. It had the sucker thing on it, and, um, it would stick to stuff, and it had a little secret agent card and badge. It was really cool. So, I put it down, I'm playing with it all day, I put it on my bed in my room, and I go to watch the movie. When the movie's over, I run back into my room at 11 o'clock, and I go to pick up the thing, and I'm humming the theme song to uh, Taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3, and I'm all excited now. And I go, get, I go to look for it, and it's gone. I look under the bed, I look behind the bed. My parents were in the room with me, they were the only ones in the house, we all watched the movie together. And I left it there before the movie, and I've never, th- I've never found it. I moved from that place. Even when I moved a few years later, I looked under the bed. I looked everywhere. When all the furniture was out, we never found it or what happened to it. And to me, that is really creepy. Like, how did it disappear? Magic, my friend. Magic. Yeah. I always thought of that Twilight Zone episode where they had the the portal opened to another dimension behind the bed. And I always think that must have been what happened. That had to be what happened. How does something, you know, disappear? What the gun, all the little uh, darts that shoot, the badge, everything was gone. And I didn't live on the ground floor where anyone could open a window and come in and take it. I was on on upper floor. So where did it go? To this day, I can't figure that out. That's still the creepiest thing that ever happened to me because I just... There's no explanation for it. Hmm. You're a big fan of Halloween, which the Wiccans call yes. Samhain. What do you know about its history? Well, it, it's in the pagan times. They there was the worship of the ancestors, and it is believed. On the day of Halloween, the festival of Samhain, the veil between our world and the next is the thinnest. You know, it's almost like if by explaining it today, if this, if if the other, if, our, if the next life is another dimension we enter into, the dimensions touch, and on that day is the day that of the worship, pagans worship the ancestors, 
and it was a day where you could commune with the, the spirits of your ancestors. Like in Mexico, they still celebrate Day of the Dead. You know, everyone gets dressed up like a skeleton. You saw that in the beginning of um, uh, Spectre, the James Bond movie. Um, it, it's it's been in so many cultures. This this date in so many religions around the world, pagan religions, that that this is the day to worship the ancestors. You know, some some cultures actually take the bones of the dead. Like in Mexico, you keep the bones of the dead in your house and you bring them and keep the skull. So after you bury someone a year later, you dig up the skull and you put it in your house and you keep it in a box and you take it out and you give them, you know, rum and cigarettes and all this stuff and they hang out with you on the day of the dead. And it's the day where you can get wisdom from your ancestors and ask them questions and, and celebrate your ancestors. That's what Halloween was all about. And later became ghouls and goblins and all of that. But the original festival is an ancient pagan rite um, where you can commune with your ancestors, that they are in another realm, they're in another place waiting for you, and you can commune with them. What's your favorite Halloween treat? Halloween treat? Um, I used to love um, when we used to call, when we used to get candy apples. I love those jellied apples. Those were the best. I mean, we got plenty of candy, but the jelly apples, you got maybe one, you know, and it was always special. That I really liked. See, up here, we never really got apples. Usually, if we got apples, we'd just throw them out. Wait until we get to the next house. Never got the candied apples. The odd time. I think of like maybe twice in my entire trick-or-treating career, which ended about three years ago. <laughs> razor blades in the apples and then no one gave apples anymore like to kill that person yeah yeah you know what it was always nice because there was always the that one elderly person who realized that after a long night of walking for candy they gave out juice boxes that was always cool that was cool that's cool too you know and, and there was, was people that used to give uh um, uh, coupons to McDonald's and stuff. I remember that too. We used to get the two for one Big Mac, so we used to get the uh, shake, the free shake, and give McDonald's coupons. We used to like that too. See, up here, I'll tell you the one candy I hate. Up here in Canada, we have these things called rockets. And what they are is like compressed powder. All right. And they're just little like tablet type candies and they come in a row of like 10 or 12 and then you know they're all individual and they're, they're just horrible they are they are just horrible i mean you might as well just sick someone's teeth on some drywall and i'll tell oh, you do you remember pop those little rocks that would sizzle in your mouth and pop and would, like those. let out CO2. yeah every every time after Halloween, when we went back to school, everyone would throw them all over the playground for the pigeons to eat, and then the pigeons would explode. Oh, nice. Nice. See, I never wasted the Pop Rocks on that. I was, I was right into the oh. Pop Rocks. I hated that. I hated them. It's like torture to the bird. You're blowing them up. It's disgusting. I never did it. I used to get angry at people that did. You know, I'm always, you know, an animal, you know, never hurt an animal unless you're killing it for food you don't you don't torture an animal but or bird or anything but i mean kids used to throw them all over the playground they were they would it was sick i never knew that i never knew that was happening like dropping a mentos into a coke bottle the thing explodes see i i enjoyed getting pop rocks i like the tootsie rolls when my son goes trick or treating, th there better be some Tootsie Rolls in there because I'm going to pig out on those. Well, you know what the best gift was though, the uh, Topps baseball cards with the bubble gum inside. When people gave those out, because you could actually flip the baseball cards and add to your collection. So we used to like getting baseball cards. Oh, the packages. see, we we got ripped off here. Nobody was giving out hockey cards or baseball cards here. Nobody. It was, it, where I grew up. All apartment buildings, so everyone knew everyone in the apartment building. So when you get better, better stuff, 
because everyone knew the kids, you know, when you open the door, you knew who they were. And, you know, everybody knows the parents because you all live in the building together. You know, when you're on the street, you go into different neighborhoods, you may not hang out in that neighborhood. Nobody knows you. But in the apartment buildings where I lived, everybody knew everybody. So, you know, they'd be like, who is that behind the mask? Is that you, Ian? You know, and they'd be like, oh, we got something special for you. You know, and they'd give you cool gifts. You know, it was was fun uh, trick-or-treating, you know. I mean, the biggest, the biggest thrill was the first time, I, I don't know, I think I was like 12, 11 or 12 was the first time my mom let me go trick-or-treating just with my friends. You know, that was fun. I, 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 was, I felt like, oh, I'm so adult. I got to go trick-or-treating by myself. What was your best costume? My favorite costume was... Um, uh, uh, Dracula, always. <laughs> but I think the best, the two best costumes I ever did, I went all out on, was when I was in college. I did uh, one year Freddy Krueger, um, and then I did um, the Phantom of the Opera, where I had the the Phantom mask for the play, and under the mask I had this deformed face that I bought all this makeup and did. And Freddy, I actually had burn scars and did all the 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 uh, special effects makeup. I bought a kit and I used. Um, Spirit glue and all this stuff to create the burn scars. It was, it was, it was pretty impressive. I had a, and I had a, it was funny because I had a red and black striped sweater that I wore and I built rubber um, knives and put it uh, and then took off the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the felt uh, glove that was there and put it on a real work glove and, and, and used uh, rivets to put it in the glove. And it was, it looked like the real thing. It was a, that was great. And then one year uh, uh, after school, after college, I did the Terminator and I had the glowing eye. It was a kit that I bought and it came out so fantastic with my skin peeled back and the metal coming through. It was freaking amazing. I have pictures of it. I was, but I, you know, of course I was the metal head. So I had this all this long hair and I looked like a lost boy with a Terminator lost boy. It was really cool. <laughs> Jeez. I think the best costume, my buddy and I, we tag teamed up and went as Beavis and Butthead one year. Went down to the States because up here in Canada, you can't find the good masks. So went down to a place called Bellis Fair Mall in, in Bellingham, Washington to find Beavis and Butthead masks and be damned if we didn't find them. Ended up placed in like third place in uh, the uh, costume party. That was kind of cool. That's before people realized how bad Beavis and Butthead really were. But hey, all part of the childhood. All part of the childhood. So you get no candy. Now, now be honest with you. Be honest here. When you go get candy for the kids to hand out, are you watching what you grab, or are you just grabbing the first thing? I, I, it would depend. You know, if you got there early, you would pick out the ones you wanted. Like I was Milky Ways. I love Milky Ways, so I'd pick out all the Twix and the Milky Ways first. If if it was at the bottom of the ba- barrel, I would just grab whatever's there. Um, but I did have one crazy costume that I marched in the Halloween parade in the village in Manhattan. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the, the village parade is a lot of, you know, LGBTQ people that really have these outrageous, beautiful costumes, a lot of, um, you know, uh, um, cross dressers, just, I mean, amazing costumes. So I, uh, that was the year that, um, uh, Pee Wee Herman got arrested for masturbating in the in the theater in the in the porn theater, so yes. I I I bought a strap on. Can I say this on the air? Strap on dildo. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you just did. I put it. I, I dressed as Pee Wee Herman, and I put that on, and I had it with it walking out. It, everybody was taking pictures of me. That was my craziest costume. I don't know why. You know, it was on a dare that I did it. So I got dressed as Huey Herman as, as, with with that. It was crazy. You pervert. It was my you, first... you pervert. 
Yeah, well, it was the village parade, so it was, you know, kind of, it's kind of wild and everything goes, so it kind of fit in. But, you know, I wanted to be outrageous because I wanted to stand out. I mean, you have these people with these amazing costumes, and you just, you want to, you know, you want to fit in when you're going to march in the village parade. It's an experience. If you ever in New York for Halloween, the village parade is one of the most amazing things to see. The costumes, the enthusiasm, it's thousands and thousands of people marching along 6th Avenue. It's really amazing. We only got about three and a half minutes left with you tonight, Ian, and I want to say thank you so much for coming on. What projects are you working on these days? Oh, uh, I am uh, we just closing a deal on doing the uh, Yo! MTV Raps docuseries, and we are about ready to start uh, putting together the Public Enemy movie. We're uh, just about ready to go to script on that. And I've got a new horror movie coming, uh, Cursed, which I can't say who's going to be in it yet, but a couple of big stars are going to be in it. It's my biggest budget. So all that's happening at once, and we're all really excited. I mean, my production company and we, my partner, Michael Alden, just did um, the King's Speech in Chicago, and he's bringing it to Broadway. And um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, and I'm more diversified than I've ever been, you know. So it's an exciting year. That's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when do you uh, start putting the script to the public enemy? Um, we're ha- that's the meeting on Friday I'm going to. So right now we're interviewing directors, and we'll wait for the to finalize the director. We have three or four that are interested. we got to have them meet with the guys and see who who's the right one to direct it, and then we'll bring in his writer. It's not something I'm going to write. Um, uh I, well, then we'll bring in the director's writer and start putting a script together. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and uh, we brought in a new partner, Guy Rydell, who did uh, um, he did Creed Two and he did uh, Wedding Crashes and uh, and a John Wick Three. So I mean, we've got a, pr- a great team working on it, and it's just um, it's really exciting because you know it's. It's a Long Island story. It's guys that I know, and you know their passion for the music and 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 for the issues, and that nothing again, like we said before, nothing's changed in thirty years. You know, it's how their songs still have the same resonance today. So, you know, it's a it's a it's a great project. You know, it's it's I, I it's think it's wonderful. That, yeah, I mean they're special guys. I mean that. You know, they took real risks with their art, and that's something that I, I always admire. Well, it's always good to have you on Space Out Radio, my friend. It is, we got about a minute left, and, and you know, your creativity and everything that you do is, is just phenomenal, and, you know, we will definitely be talking this week as well because we got some things we need to be working on uh, for this show, and I know you help out. Uh, our audience may not know, but you help out as a, I'm going to say, kind of a consultant for us here behind the scenes. That's for sure, and you do a damn good job. I love I love what you do, the openness of your show and and the questions you ask and how great a host you are and how lively the show is and the great audience participation and how, you know, the fans are so dedicated. It's great to come to a place, you know, like this. The atmosphere you create is, is, is great for radio. I mean, you know, it's such a freedom cause that I never had when I did the morning show in New York. There was never that freedom because we were so regimented in what we could do. But here to be able to talk about so many things in a safe place for everyone who listens and comes on to speak about things that in other places you could be looked at as a coop. But here, you know, you're welcomed into the family, and I love that about the show. Well, you, you know, we do try. We do try, my friend. I want to say thank you, Ian Holt, for coming on Spaced Out Radio. Hey, everyone. Coming up next, we have the SOR News Wire, the thought of the day. Stay tuned.
Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Hey, Spaced Out Radio fans. It's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiel. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Hey everybody, the SOR of Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. 
At spacedoutradio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Rounded third, we're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair at SOR headquarters. Reminder that if you've missed most of this show or others, you can always check out our free YouTube channel for our archives are stored. YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. It's updated daily. You can also do a little shopping at the SOR Vault. Pick up a new book at We Read the Night. And, of course, join up on the SOR Space Travelers Club for 5 bucks a month. Speaking of the news, let's get to it, shall we? The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR News Wire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird. The strange, the wacky, and sometimes the, I don't know what to call these. Let's just call them the head shakers. Look, I don't care what side of the political ledger you fall on, especially in the states, whether you're Democrat, Libertarian, Republican, don't even care. I really don't. This is just wrong. Florida teen was acting like Florida man. As this young lady showed her apparent disdain for President Donald Trump when she allegedly punched a man who was dressed up as the commander in chief at a Halloween fair over the weekend. According to authorities, the 14 year old girl walked right up to the man who was standing on line with his family Saturday night for a haunted house at the Collier County Fairgrounds, and she punched him in the jaw. The girl then allegedly laughed and ran back to a group of friends, citing the Collier County Sheriff's Office. The Trump fan told authorities he approached the teen and asked her why she did that, and a deputy later questioned the 14-year-old and her parents. Investigators said the sole motivation was to strike Trump, and a county school system employee reportedly told officials the incident was filmed and posted to Instagram. The teen has been charged with misdemeanor battery. A squirrel ran through an Alabama church during a morning service that was being filmed to post online, and the pastor said the incident evoked a classic country song. The Vestavia Hills United Methodist Church posted the video to its Facebook page, showing senior pastor Bill Brunson addressing the congregation this past Sunday morning as parishioners could be heard screaming in the background as the squirrel ran wild through the building. 
Let me share with you, many, many years ago, Ray Stevens sang a song entitled Mississippi Squirrel Revival when a squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in the sleepy little town of Pascagoula, Brunson said in the video. Just so you know, the scream you heard is because a squirrel came through our stained glass window and has entered the balcony and is encouraging our members to get a little bit more spiritual than usual. Brunson went on to say congregation members tried to trap the squirrel using a collection plate. However, if you want any squirrel capturing skills, if that's your spiritual gift, move to the balcony and assist in the hunt, he said. No word if they just tried to use some nuts. All right. Let's get this one going. There is support to shut down an extreme haunted house in Summertown, Tennessee, and it's growing quickly after a North Carolina woman called it a torture chamber under disguise in an online petition demanding its closure. Frankie Towery, who started the petition, says she regards McCamey Manor as a kidnapping and torture house because she said people are not permitted to immediately leave when they ask to do so. But Tuesday afternoon, more than 43,000 people signed her petition. They do screenings to find the weakest, most easily manipulated people to do the haunt. And if Russ doesn't think you're easily manipulated, you aren't allowed to go, Towery said in the petition. According to the Bikami Manor website, participants must be medically cleared by a doctor, pass a background check, be screened via FaceTime or phone, sign a 40-page waiver, and a pass a drug test on the day of the experience. The website also states that every experience is different than the next and could last up to 10 hours. Although participants are offered $20,000 if they complete the experience, Oda Russ McCamey has told the media that no one has made it the entire way through. Participants are also required to watch a two-hour video prior to the experience, which compiles attempts by all contestants from 2017 to 2019. Because no one has fully completed the experience, the video is a compilation of people saying, you really do not want to do this. Well, according to the Haunted House's website, participants choose to drop out of the experience at any time. Towery doesn't agree, though. Previously, no safe word was allowed. Oh, she needs a safe word. He, as in Russ, changed that. But there's been reports that the torture continues even when people repeat their safe word for several minutes. Towery also takes note of McCamey Manor's free entry. All McCamey attempts or accepts is a bag of dog food. People don't pay money to get in, which is technically the loophole. They're doing it for fun, and it's not fun after about 10 minutes of getting duct tape around your head, forced to eat things, being waterboarded, and forced underwater, she wrote. McCamey Manor was featured on Netflix, Haunters, Art of the Scare, and on an episode of Dark Tourist, Newsweek reached out to David Ferrier, host of Dark Tourist, who detailed the different beliefs surrounding McCamey Manor and how McCamey has used his media savviness to make the manor more popular. Well, let's see if the petition works, shall we? Here's a cool story. The U.S. Air Force's X-37B space plane landed Sunday back on Earth after spending an incredible 780 days in orbit, the longest mission in the mysterious military test program's history. The uncrewed plane, which looks like a small space shuttle, conducted in-orbit experiments that could then be brought back to Earth for examination. The exact details of these experiments, of course, guarded secrets. In a statement, the Air Force only revealed that the program performs risk reduction, experimentation, and concept of operations development for reusable space vehicle technologies. This is the fifth X-37B space plane to be launched into orbit over the past decade, with each flight longer than its predecessor. Our team has been preparing for this event, and I'm extremely proud to see their work and dedication culminate in today's safe and successful landing of the X-37B, said Brigadier General Douglas Scheiss in a statement. Each mission has been highly secretive, leading to public speculation that the planes could be used for spying activity or testing weapons for space. Maybe they're looking for aliens. We just don't know. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Let's move on. 
Where's the birthplace of humanity? Where do you think? Well, where was the evolutionary birthplace of modern humans? The East African Great Rift Valley has long been favored contender until today. New research has used DNA to trace humanity's earliest footsteps to a prehistoric wetland called, oh my gosh, I'm going to butcher this, Makatik Gadi Okavango, south of the Great Zambezi River. Analysis published in Nature Today shows that the earliest population of modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, arose 200,000 years ago in an area that covers parts of modern-day Botswana, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. Today is a dry, dusty land with scattered salt pans. It is hard to believe that modern humans lived and thrived in wetlands here for 70,000 years before ancestors began to explore the rest of Africa and ultimately the world. The study says we were able to pinpoint this region by studying mitochondrial DNA known as mitogenome, unlike nuclear DNA, which is passed on by both mother and father. Mitochondrial DNA is passed only by the mother, which means it is not jumbled up in each generation. Study goes on to say, if we think of all modern humans as occupying a particular place on a huge family tree, logically we would find the most diverse mitogenomes at the very base of the tree because it's ultimate source of all various branches. Yeah, well, apparently this place used to be beautiful. Geological evidence suggests that at this time, the prehistoric lake that surrounded the first humans had dominated the region for millions of years, had begun to break up through shifting of the land. This would have created a vast wetland region ideal to sustain life. No idea if the mosquitoes were there. But if it was so ideal, why did our ancestors begin to explore other places? First heading northeast, later southwest, from their ancestral home. Apparently, Tinder led them that way. Tinder. Climate data suggests that around the time the region experienced a huge drought, notably around 137,000 years ago, humidity increased to the northeast of the homeland and scattered people all around. Too bad. I like the Tinder answer better. Gail doesn't know what that is, though. Tinder, Gail. Tinder. A Nepali mountaineer and former British Marine has climbed the world's tallest 14 peaks in six months, beating the earlier record almost eight years. Nirmal Persia reached the top of his 14th mountain, Shishpangma, in China on Tuesday morning. Persia, who's 36 years old, joined the British Army in 2003 and became a Royal Marine in 2009. His climbing career began when he walked to Everest Base Camp in 2012, and instead of returning his plan, well, he just said, screw it, I'm going to climb the entire mountain. So he did. He was already the holder of numerous records, including the fastest doubleheader of two mountains higher than 8,000 meters, and was awarded the MBE, a civilian honor, by the Queen in 2018. Nepalese soldiers have served in the British Army, specifically the Brigade of Gurkhas, for more than 200 years. There are 14 mountains in the world higher than 8,000 meters, and the previous record for climbing them was just under eight years. Persia's own website says the previous record holder was Polish climber Jerzy Kukucha, who finished the challenge in 1987 in seven years, 11 months, and 14 days. But an article on the British Mountaineering Council's website says the record holder was, in fact, the South Korean Kim Chang-ho, with a time of seven years, ten months, and six days. Persia began his campaign in Nepal in April, climbed Everest in May. There, he was picture of the queue at the top of the summit, gained worldwide attention. During his climbs, he rescued four other climbers, three of whom called suicide missions, and as in his own words, bled from every angle. Nice picture of him on Everest, by the way. But it wasn't nonstop work. In August, he climbed Everest, Losi, Makalu, in five days. But it could have been three, had he not stopped for two nights to have a drink. In September... 
He challenge, his challenge was held up while he waited for permission to climb the final mountain, Shishapangma, in the Tibetan Autonomous Region of China. His permit was granted on October 15th after the Nepali government approached the Chinese government on his behalf. Yeah, this guy is badass. Badass! Good for him. You know, by the way, Nelson Dellis, our former guest, is planning on climbing Everest in 2020. It'll be his fourth attempt at the summit. Last two times he almost died. Let's hope he makes it. We may have something special there. Maybe we'll do something with a spaced out radio flag. You guys can join me in on that. How about that? Let's think about that. We got we got a little bit of time, but we got to think about that. All right, we got time for I believe one more story here. And of course, Captain Shark chooses a shark story. <sighs> A tourist snorkeling on Australia's Great Barrier Reef had his foot bitten off by a shark before the predator turned around and mauled another person in his group, officials say. The men were identified as Alistair Radden and Danny Miggs from Britain. They told first responders that they were wrestling and thrashing about in the water during the snorkeling tour in the Whitsunday Islands where they were targeted. The shark first severed one man's right foot and then circled back and mauled another right calf. According to Queensland State Ambulance Service spokeswoman Tracy Eastwick, both men were brought seven miles by boat to the mainland of Arley Beach, where paramedics were waiting for them. An ambulance official told the media they were flown by helicopter then to a hospital in the city of McKay, where they are reported to be in serious but stable condition. Zigzag Whit Sundays, the operator of the snorkeling tour, the men were on, said they are assisting authorities with the investigation. We have suspended to our tours for today and will work closely with authorities regarding our upcoming tours. The company said in a statement, shark attacks in the area, an internationally renowned vacation destination, are not uncommon. Shark killed a 33-year-old man in November last year while he was paddleboarding in Whitsunday Island Harbor. You know, it's just simple. If there's sharks in the water. And you're paddle boating, you deserve it. No. No, 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 no. If you are putting yourself in that type of danger, it may be your fault. Stay out of the ocean, people. Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages and read your responses on the air. Why? Because we love the audience participation around here. Today's thought of the day is as follows. Who is the best horror movie character and why? Cynthia, we're kicking it off with you. The Blob, because it creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor, right through the door, and all around the wall. A splotch, a blotch, be careful of the Blob. Marty, the Bride of Frankenstein, because it is scary knowing even if your gal is custom made for you, you'll still have issues with her. Daniel, Gurion from Gamera versus Gurion. Gurion is a gigantic monster with a giant sword as his head being just under half his total weight. He also boasts ninja stars that are shot from portals just above the eyes with pinpoint accuracy. Gurion is a truly horrifying creature. Julien, Freddy. He get all of those wannabe remote viewers in that corner, those geek women, kids, adults, old, etc., playing with them, understanding their pain and fear. Big sister. She's about Freddy Krueger as well, because everyone has to sleep sometime. Jesse puts on the lotion. Still don't get that. Steven. Corey Good. Above moronic. Yeah. Okay, that one's fun. Let's see what's on Facebook. Jeray, my ex-wife. But seriously, there are so many best ones. For me, it's a combination of the originals. 
I was frightened by Killer Clown from outer space. I'm leaning towards Freddy as one of my faves for sure. I watched all the Elm Streets and would always be scared to go to sleep. Why? Because it's childhood memories, fool. Ha ha ha. Jerry has nice hair. Thanks, Jerry. Reverend Keith, Randall Flagg from the stand. Here I thought you would have talked him out. Somebody else. Won't say. Andrew, Dracula. He's horrific, but he offers potential immortality, and he suffers from all of the same human failings we all share. Tom, Michael Myers, human with an element of a supernatural. Chris. The latest is the nun. She scared the heck out of me from the Ed and Lorraine Warren files. Tessie. Jackal from 13 Ghosts. Michael Myers from Marilyn. Catherine, the woman in misery, made makes me cringe. William, my ex-wives, no explanation needed. Rich Giordano, little Richie G, the goat man. Satan from the original Exorcist. Exorcist. He was brutal, if you think about it. Throwing up, pissing, punching with scissors, 360 head de- degree head rotations that would make an owl blush and harsh language. Marlene, Rutger Hauer in The Hitcher. Nick, so many to choose from. It's hard to nail down a best, but I will go with Ash from The Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. Why? Because you can't help but laugh at the one-liners he goes from and every man at the start of The Evil Dead to a badass deadite killer. Natasha, as a true fan of the genre, the answer is highly subjective, and it would be difficult to pinpoint one character without some sort of context. Okay. Catherine, Nancy from A Nightmare on Elm Street, because Scream Queen, or best Scream Queen, and she set the bar. The Ash from The Evil Dead, because he's Ash from The Evil Dead. Kelly, this will be the last one. Mary Poppins, that lady was scary. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is Watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio. Rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, Wherever you may be, want to give a big shout out to everybody following along in the SOR Space Travelers Club on our website. Thank you so much on Facebook. In Spreakerland, LGAB, Revolution Radio, and on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Have a great night, everybody. Talking Giants with Barbara DeLong, Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. Stay tuned. We'll be back in 21 hours. Good night.